Hi folks, uh, this is the water pick water flosser as you can see here and I have a demo model here which uh, I'd like to tear down so you can see what's inside. Now I'd like to do um, a tear down but be able to put it back together although I don't think that's going to be possible. It looks like it's going to be a destructive tear down because it seems pretty well sealed together. But let me show you how it works. First of all, you have an on off switch and two levels, one and two. Okay, there's a reservoir here that comes off. This is the uh, the tube that sucks in the water. This is the water reservoir. What you do is you'd open up this little flap and you'd pour water in here. You close it shut. There's the rubber seal will uh, ensure that water doesn't leak out of this area. And then the tube slides into the top and you just slip it on here and it clicks together. This end here comes with several different types of tips. When you press this button, the tip releases. You can turn it around, place it in, and it's locked in. So that's the tube. And then finally, the only other thing are, is the battery compartment. Now, you pretty much have to... Um, you, you can remove the batteries with the water reservoir in place. It's just that it's tough to get a grip onto this thing. But there's a lock and an unlock. What you do is you... You rotate this, and then this end cap comes off, and you'll notice three batteries go in there. They're just uh, double A's. These ones happen to be from water pick, so they're labeled water pick, but um, they're not rechargeable. So you have to make sure that you um, replace your batteries when it starts to get low. And... Uh, Unfortunately, there's no indicator on this thing at all. There's no LED. Um, nothing to specify whether your batteries are low. So you'll just have to figure it out. Either it shuts off when it's too low, or it gets slower. I don't know if it just pumps slower until it finally dies, and you just have to feel when it's appropriate to stop with this and change the batteries yourself. In any case, let's see if we can open this up and... We'll give it a shot. Now, if you look at the case here, you can kind of pry this apart and you can see, you know, you can kind of sneak a peek underneath, but I'm not sure. It looks like the bottom part here slides out. I'm going to take the tip off here as well. And um, there's this portion here, which is a, um, like a decorative metal plastic material but I have a feeling that it's pretty much glued in there um, it's not prying off easily it's probably stuck on with glue and it is not going to budge at all same thing here this bottom part there seems to be a place where you can get in but, once again, I do not think it's going to pry apart at all. So, as far as repairability goes for this device, it's zero. Um, if you can't get it in, once it dies, it's not going to work at all. Uh, let's see again if there's any, any chance the top will come off. I don't think so either. Uh, A, there's really no place to pry it even. And the second thing is, it's almost impossible to, to break it off. So, I'm going to pause the video for a moment, and I'm going to see if I can somehow remove the plastic, uh, at least without hurting myself, and in a way that I could possibly piece this thing back together. But um, I'll keep you updated. So, hang on a moment, and we'll see what we can do. Thanks. All right, so I managed to pry off some of this plastic, and guess what? There's absolutely nothing under here. There's just a piece left over, and what you have is a switch up here. What this, uh, this plastic does is it holds in this little switch button, and it goes in here, and it just essentially 
as you move this up and down, it will rotate this little uh, pot over there or knob, and you can do that even just uh, manually. It just turns it to different positions. So there you have it. But yeah, this, this absolutely does not give us any better access to getting into this device. I'm going to see if I can cut open some other parts. So stay tuned. Please. Okay, and we're in. Um, I'll show you what I did, but yes, it was destructive. Here's the device. You can see that we've removed the plastic on the front end. This was essentially just to cover over the button. You can see the button goes up and down to two positions. There's off, one, and two, which is a little bit faster. When this is removed, you get absolutely nowhere. There aren't any screw holes here. The button itself falls off, and you can see there's a small pin, which when rotated, that's how it actually t uh, turns on and on. It's a small, small round switch. In any case, the batteries are here. What I did to get this off was I basically just pried the bottom end. If you pry this, and here, let me take this off and remove the batteries. I wedged and wedged and wedged and wedged and wedged and wedged. And all around this thing, I kept wedging until the plastic basically broke off. And then I was able to remove the inner aspect from the outer sleeve. And here we have it. This is the inner workings. Now, there is... Uh, this is the, the switch, which is essentially just a small, uh, it, it, it makes contact, I guess, um, through what looks like a couple of different resistors. I'm not sure what's underneath this here. Let's uh, slip this off. There's a resistor in there. I'm going to pull that down. And then here on the other side is another resistor, most likely. I can slip that again off. You can see the resistor under there. So this uh, switch essentially just puts the the incoming voltage you can see coming from the red and black wires through one or both resistors. It may just be doing one resistor when it wants one speed and, and then or or two resistors when it wants the lower speed and then passing it through one resistor when it wants the higher speed or it may actually have uh, there may be two different values that it uses uh, so they use independently but based on what I see it's just simple um, in four and a half volts because 1.5 times three and then through different resistors to power the motor now the motor should be in this chamber here and I see here the straw, it goes up through here, there's a small pump, and it appears that there's a, um, a motor inside of here, essentially just circulates perhaps a, a gear or a shaft that spins around the pump here. So we'll have a look in there in a moment, and we'll see how it works, but it's essentially just um, rotating a pump here and water essentially comes up the straw and shoots out the end and the motor is behind here we'll open that up and see how it looks okay so I've um, managed to remove this part here it's quite interesting uh, this was here the switch and I put back the batteries and uh, this tube goes up here and there's this system here is essentially a number of different valves there's a valve there and there's another valve in here. The actual pump doesn't actually work the way you think it does. This is the actual working end. There's a motor in here with some gears. And this mechanism, um, if you look peer down in here, it looks like it rotates and vibrates this piece. Watch, if I turn this on, you'll see what I mean. 
Okay, that end, if you look carefully, is moving up and down. The end of it, it's hard to tell, but it's oscillating up and down. Okay, let me just turn this down a bit. Okay, you can see again, if I go slowly here, you see it moving up and down? So that's how it's pumping. It's essentially creating pushing and sucking forces in and out. And so that's um, the way that this thing is, works is uh, when, you, when this slips over and it's attached and that blue part is pushed inside of here, it's essentially going in and out, in and out, in and out. And because there are valves here and also in here, um, the water only shoots this one direction from this end here from the reservoir through this system and it shoots out the end that's why you get that pulsing action that's um, the, the when you when this thing works you don't get a, a constant stream you get this these squirting uh, pulses tip 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 so that's essentially what's happening you can see the vibration it goes in and out Okay. I'm not, I don't know if they borrowed this from something else, but it uh, looks like a pretty common mechanism. But you can see it's just vibrating my finger there, and that's essentially what it's doing, oscillating in and out. Um, you can peer inside of this area a little bit more, but it's, it's not easy to see what's happening. But there's some, there's a motor, and I'm assuming there's, a, um, there's some gears that essentially move this up and down. And this seal uh, is just to keep the vibration or the noise out and also the water perhaps from leaking out from this end uh, because it may, the water can sometimes leak out. But that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, just in case you ever need to fix this, I don't think it's going to be really feasible. Um, it's a bit of a bulky device. That's my only complaint with it. Otherwise, it seems to work quite well. It's very inexpensive, so I can understand why you know, it's not really something you'd want to repair anyway. And um, you know, if you ever open it up, you're not going to be able to put it back. First of all, you didn't have to remove this part, so don't bother with that at all. Really, the only way you need to get in, if you ever decide to open one up, is simply to pry apart um, at the bottom it will open up around this edge and then you should be able to slide it out uh, but if you put it back you're not going to have a nice seam anymore it's going to look uh, broken so don't think about repairing it just buy a new one it seems to be built pretty well it seems pretty simple also so i highly doubt that it would break um, these wires here are all fastened down pretty well and essentially the only, like I said, the only complaint is the bulk. Um, I may, there may have been a possibility to reduce this somewhat in size but honestly uh, a lot of people like the larger size because it's easier to grip and you need that size to contain the water reservoir because you can see otherwise you'll run out of water qu quite uh, rapidly. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this teardown, destructive teardown of a water pick cordless flosser. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll do more. Thanks again for watching. Oh, just a little extra um, note here. I uh, managed to assemble this thing back together and I duct taped it so that it wouldn't fall apart. But uh, everything seems to be in working order. This thing slides in and out. I have uh, the switch back in place. And you, you can hear it working. I can still change my batteries here if I need to. That just comes off. And I can put it back on. So, let's go and check it out. Let's test it out. Okay, let's fill up the reservoir. Okay, 
Here it is. Slide it in place. There we go. And let's turn it on. Whoa, that is strong. Getting water everywhere. It is a very powerful. You can see here, I'll put a Kleenex down. Watch this. It's hitting it like a dartboard, like a, an airsoft uh, rapid fire gun. I just made holes through it, you see? There we go again. Check out the power on this thing. Anyway, that is one beast of an air flosser. It is really, really strong. I've used pretty much all the water there. And there, it's done. But uh, yeah, that's shooting out pretty well. I'm um, impressed. I'm impressed by the power on this thing. Uh, anyway, that'll be it for this teardown. Hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again for watching.